Hello, it's Thursday! And as voted in the most recent Not My Idea poll on YouTube, we are going to be making a giraffe today. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about tools and materials. For today's project, you're going to need 8-ply 100% acrylic yarn in three colours. So you're going to need two shades of giraffe, basically a pale main colour and a dark colour for your spots, and then just a little bit of white to make the whites of his eyes. You're also going to need a pair of 20mm safety eyes, your 3.5mm hook, scissors, pins and needles. Now when it comes to your needles today, bear in mind that we aren't actually sewing any of the pieces together, they're just there to help us add the markings at the end. And some stuffing. But that's it. A written version of today's pattern will be sent out to my patrons and will also be made available on my Etsy. I will leave a link to both in the description down below for anybody who is interested. So here is our fabulous giraffe. He is a bit tricky to fit all on screen, so we're going to fit him sideways. Hello. So what's really kind of fun about this pattern is because the legs are attached as we go, he can do that splat baby giraffe pose that I just think is really endearing. Authenticity. Okay, so first up today we are going to be making all of the bits. So we're going to start really small. We're going to start with his horns. Okay, so for our horns we're going to start in our dark or like your spot colour and we're going to start with a magic ring of six. You're then going to work a round of six single crochet, so that is one single crochet in each stitch. And we're going to change colours in the last stitch of this round. So that's stitch five, and so I have one stitch remaining. So you should always work your colour changes in the stitch before you need the new colour to be active. Because round three is in our lighter colour, that means that we need to change to it in the last stitch of our darker colour. So to do colour changes for this pattern, you're going to insert your hook through your stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop of your existing colour, so this is exactly the same as you would start a regular single crochet. Hold the old colour out of the way, grab a strand of the colour you want to change to. Line it up on the back of the piece and pinch it at the base of the stitch. Then yarn over and pull through the loops on your hook. Your stitch will be a little wibbly wobbly at this point, and you can just tug those tails to settle it down nicely. So what that'll leave you with is a single crochet in your old colour, but your new colour is on your hook, ready to go. So row three is six single crochet, but in the back loops only. So if you look straight down at your stitches, you'll see you have two loops that you can work through, and normally we work through both of them. When we're working through the back loop only, that means you're going to insert your hook just through the loop on the side facing away from you, and otherwise work your stitch as per normal. So I'm going to work six of those around the outside of the piece. Like so. So because we left those front loops free, we get this little edge around the top of our horn. We are then just going to work two more rows of six single crochet for a combined total of 12 stitches. And finish off. So there is your first tiny little dearly bopper and we are of course going to need two of those as well. Like so. So pop those to one side for now. So you might think that the next piece we need to make are his ears, but we actually just make those as we work up the head. So that's, we can forget about those. So the next piece we're going to be making are his legs. So all four legs are exactly the same. We're going to start in the center base of each one and then basically work up the column. So you'll notice that in these legs there is one row that deals with back post single crochet. So that's when you work around the post of the stitch from the back of the work. If you're not comfortable with working with post stitches, you can absolutely replace that row with just 12 single crochet. Now if you want to, you can also add a weight into each of the feet. That will help your giraffe be slightly more stable, but I haven't used them in any of the ones that I'm showing on camera today. And then we're going to finish off. So in the interest of saving lives, saving lives, Jesus, it's not that serious guys. So in the interest of saving time as we start to build our giraffe, we're actually just going to spend a little bit of time prepping this leg now. So the first thing I'm going to do is stuff it relatively firmly until we're two or three rows down from the opening. When we join it into the body, we will still be able to access the opening at the top of the leg and we will be adding more stuffing at that point. But for now, just fill it up most of the way. So after stuffing, you should still be able to tell which side of your foot is your front, because it will still point slightly forward. And the other thing we're just going to do is I'm going to grab just a plastic darning needle, though any needle will do really, 
and thread it with some of my spot color. Now, if any of you were here for the gecko last week, you should already have some idea about what's about to So what we're going to be doing is threading on some smaller spots just to smooth the transition between our, our bigger spots and the yellow of the rest of the leg. So I'm going to start by just threading my needle out through basically one of the first yellow stitches of the leg, like so. And they're going to put a little stitch in place to lock it in. Then I work in a continuous spiral, so I'm just going to follow the flow of my work around just basically working my needle in and out between the gaps of the stitches. And I'm going to do that for approximately four rows of the leg. So just basically alternating stitches, leaving these little lines behind. So I'm doing this for four rows on mine, but you can continue down as much or as little as you please. Just make sure that your legs pretty much match. And when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to thread my needle out through a different point on the leg and trim off. So there is my very nice spotty leg. And I am, of course, going to need four of those, like so. So note that my spots all come down to roughly the same point on all of my legs, just because that's how I want them to look. So I'm going to pop those little drumsticks off to one side now. So the last thing we need to make before we can start assembling the giraffe in, in true form is his tail. So for his tail, we start at the tip. And we are going to work our way back up towards the base. And I'm not doing my normal magic ring for this one here, and that's because I want a finer point on the tail, and I found that magic rings are good if you want kind of a blunt end to things, but when you want a pointy point, uh, they just, they're just not up to it. So we're going to start by chaining two, like so. We're then going to turn, and in the second chain from our hook, which is the first chain that we did, I'm going to put three single crochet all into that one chain. Now note, as I'm working those three, I am kind of working around the chain, and that is because those three stitches will form our first round. So there we go. I've got my one, two, and three. So then in the next round, we're going to work an increase and then two single crochet. Then an increase and three single crochet. Then an increase and four single crochet. So that will get us up to six stitches around, which is a more reasonable number to work from. And we're going to work two rows of six single crochet for a combined total of 12 stitches. Then the last row we're going to work in our dark color, we are going to work two repeats of a decrease, and then a single crochet. So that does drop us back down to the very unreasonable row count of four single crochet, and I am sorry for that. In the last stitch of our brown, I'm going to change back to our lighter color, like so. So then our first row of our yellow is going to be two repeats of a single crochet and then an increase to get us back up to six stitches. We're then going to work four rows of six single crochet for a combined total of 24 single crochet. So there's three rows to go. We're going to work two repeats of an increase and then two single crochet, which will get us up to eight stitches around. And finally, two rows of eight single crochet for a combined total of 16 stitches. And finish off. So there should be eight stitches left around your opening. We're going to leave that open for now. And we're not going to worry about stuffing this piece. You can pop that little tail to one side. Okay, so now we have all of our bits of giraffe. It's time to actually make a giraffe. Now, I bet you didn't think you'd have to spend this long prepping to make a giraffe, but here we are. So before we get started, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how we're doing the spots. So for today, I am going to extend this square pattern all the way up to the back of the head. Uh, whereas on this version here, I obviously started it a little lower down. And the way these spots are done is they actually start out as stripes, which are pretty much entirely all one color. There are very few, if any, color changes that happen in the middle of a row. So that kind of simplifies this pattern down a little bit. But I do want to add, if you want to do your spots in a different way, all you have to do to make your giraffe all one color is ignore these color changes where they're indicated. Because they are built up in entire stripes, ignoring those color changes should be relatively simple and not too disruptive. And that will give you the chance to make spots you can sew on or add them as felt. There's a number of different ways you can approach it. I look forward to seeing some of them. Hopefully you share. But for today, we are going to be focusing on some squares. <laughs> so for our little giraffe buddy today, we are going to start at the tip of the nose in our brown. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six. 
We're then going to work six repeats of an increase around to get us up to 12 stitches. Like so. And then 12 single crochet around. So in the next row, we're going to add his little nostrils that you can see here. So we're going to start by working three decreases and then a single crochet to get around to where we want the nostril to sit. We're then going to work a triple crochet in the front loop of the next stitch and then a slip stitch into the back loop of the same stitch. So we do that by yarning over our hook twice, inserting through the front loop, yarning over and pulling up a loop. You should have four loops in total on your hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two, and then yarn over and pull through the final two. And you'll end up with this little stitch that looks like that. And I'm going to fold that forward, insert my hook through the back loop of the same stitch, and work a little slip stitch. So there is our first little nostril. I'm then going to work two single crochet around. And then in the next stitch, we're going to work our second nostril in the exact same way. There we go. Now he no longer smells terrible. And then just one single crochet to finish the row. So there is his little nose. You can see from here, we're going to be swapping to our yellow. So I'm going to frog that last stitch and change to my yellow. Now I will be swapping back to my brown again later on in the pattern, but for now I am gonna trim it off and just reattach it then. There we go, my yellow is on the hook, ready to go. So from here we'll be working the next six rows to build up the base of the head. Now, and in the next row you should be careful to only work through the triple crochets from this stitch, not the slip stitches. So there we go. So you should see, be able to see the shape of the head now. The flatter side is the underside of the head, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that engine if you can hear it. Uh, and the nostril side is the top of the head, and that's the side of the head. So over the next two rows we are going to be attaching his little dealy boppers, his, his horns. So I'm going to start by working 12 single crochet to get around to where I want to attach the first horn. like so. So note that we are just off to one side of the top of the head. And what I'm going to do is line up three stitches of the horn with the next three stitches of the head. Now it doesn't matter which three stitches of the horn you pick because it is the same the whole way around. And then I'm going to insert my hook from the inside of the horn to the outside of the horn first, and then from the outside of the head to the inside of the head. And we're going to work three single crochet like that through both layers. So that is one of the dealy boppers and I'll locked into that place. I'm then going to work just one single crochet because these little dudes are pretty close together. And we're going to do the same thing with the other little horn. So once again, just identify three stitches, line them up with the next three stitches of the head, and then work through both layers for three single crochet. And then just three single crochet to finish your round. So what you'll note about your horns is that after that row, they should be laying down pretty flat on top of the head and pointing kind of forwards. In the next row, we'll be attaching through the other three stitches of the horn, which will pull them up into position on top of the head. So they'll be standing up straight then. So we're going to start by once again, working 12 single crochet around to get back to where the horns are. Like so. So then you should identify the three remaining available stitches on your horn. And you're, this time we'll be inserting our hook from the outside to the inside of the horn and then through the next available stitch of the head as well. So there's the first one. I'll do it two more times. So you can see there that that horn is now standing up nice and straight on top of the head the way we want it to. I'm going to work one single crochet into the crochet between the horns. Then we're going to do the same thing for the second horn. So identify your three remaining available stitches and then inserting through one stitch of the horn and one stitch of the head. Work your three single crochet to finish attaching the horn. Now, if you have any kind of finishing off points from the horns dangling about, tuck them into the head now. Just working clean is better. And then three single crochet once again to finish that round. And there are his two horns firmly attached to the top of his head. They may point outwards slightly. I actually kind of like that. But Later on, if that's bothering you, you can use a little bit of stitch locking to like pull them up and straight. Wait, wait. So now that we have those antenna all nicely locked in and on top of the head, wait, wait. in the next row, we will be building his ears. So we're going to build one on either side of his head. That tends to be where the ears go. 
And this row starts by working 10 single crochet around to where we want the first ear to be. So there we go. You can see that we are two stitches before our first horn. So now we're going to be working a number of stitches all into the same stitch. And it's not even all into the same stitch, it's all into the same front loop of a stitch. So in this round we'll be working into the front loop of this stitch, and in the next row we'll be working into the back loop of it. So do be careful that you are working everything I'm about to show you into just the front loop. So we are going to start with a single crochet. We are then going to work three double crochet. So a double crochet using US crochet terms is when you yarn over once, insert your hook through the same front loop, yarn over and pull up a loop so you've got three loops on your hook, and yarn over and pull through the first two, and yarn over and pull through the next two. So there is my first double crochet and I need to do two more of those. Like so. And they're going to work a picot. So a picot, lots of new stitches here. So a picot is when you chain three. Now I tend to make my first one a sort of average sized chain, but my next two pretty tight. So I've got one kind of loosey goosey one and then two really tight ones. Then you insert your hook through that first chain that you worked and slip stitch into it. That's the point at the end of our ear. We are then going to work three more double crochet. This is all still going into that same front loop and you'll note that mine's getting kind of stretched out. And then a single crochet again into that same front loop. So there is our little giraffe ear and as I mentioned in the next row we'll be wanting to work into the back loop of that stitch. So what you can do if you have them handy is just pop a little stitch marker through that back loop. It's going to make it easier for you to find. So with that first ear done, we are going to work nine single crochet, working through both loops again now, around to where we want the second ear to be located. And then we're going to build the next ear, once again working all of our stitches into just the front loop of the same stitch. So that is a single crochet, three double crochet, then a pico. three double crochet, and finishing it off with a single crochet. With that ear done, we'll go back to working through both loops and you have just one single crochet to finish off that round. And I'm gonna grab just a budget stitch saver here to mark the other back loop, because once again, we'll be needing it in the next row. So now he's got his two big old ears. Now they might look a little bit silly to you, but keep in mind that when they're just sitting around on your giraffe, you give them a little pinch and suddenly they look a whole lot more reasonable. So we're going to work just one more row in our yellow to fully lock in those ears. So this row starts by helping to shape the lower jaw. So that is by working a single crochet three together, which is just basically decreasing over three stitches, then four single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet three together again. And note that that last one is tucked right up under that ear. We are then going to work a single crochet into that back loop that we marked in our previous round. So while that ear is going on in the front loop, we are going to single crochet in that back loop. I no longer need that. We're then going to work nine half double crochet across the top of the head. So half double crochet is when you yarn over your hook, insert through the stitch you're going to be working into, yarn over and pull up a loop so it looks just like a double crochet at this point and you're going to yarn over and just pull through all three loops so that's your stitch so that's our first one I'm going to work eight more across now the rest of this pattern does use a mix of single crochet and half double crochet and that's just because half double crochet is a slightly taller stitch which does help us gently curve our pattern in the direction we want it to go we are then going to single crochet into the back loop that's tucked behind the second ear rid of our stitch marker and then single crochet and you may have to like pull the ear up to spot this single crochet into that last stitch in the round. Now at this point you should stop and count your stitches and make sure you've got 18 just because with all of that mussing, messing about with with front loops and back loops you may have lost or gained one so I my stitch count is currently correct. So from here we are going to work up the neck but first we are just going to stop and insert our eyes. So our eyes are going to go into the fourth stitch of yellow back from our nose. So one, two, three, and four. Then just start by loosely placing them on the side of the head between the ear and the nose. I'm gonna rotate and do the same thing on the other side. 
So those are my starting positions. So when I'm looking at my giraffe straight on, keeping in mind that the nostrils might look a little crooked, everything might just seem slightly off to one side because this is a complicated knots pattern and we embrace the wonky here. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm relatively happy with their position. And if I'm not, I'm just gonna move them around. So where I've popped mine in, they have seven stitches visible between them at their narrowest point. So I'm just gonna snap my backs on. There we go. Now we will be doing a little embroidery later to add spots to the face. And in doing so, we'll also be adding kind of whites of the eyes. But for now, that is exactly what you want your giraffe to look like. Hello, I'm a giraffe and I look ridiculous. Hmm. So from here on out, we'll be working up the neck and the next row does actually start in brown. So I'm just gonna frog that last stitch that we did and I'm gonna change to my brown. I will not be trimming my colors off from this point forward just because there is quite a bit of alternation back and forth. It's easier just to sort of have them there ready to pull forward. And we're going to start working up that neck. And you'll also see that we do have some half double crochet and some single crochet mixed throughout. So just to clear up any confusion, the half double crochets will never be an increase or a decrease. So anywhere you see increase or decrease in this pattern, you are working those as though they were single crochets. And we are going to be stuffing as we go. So there we are. Now we have been stuffing as we go. So I'm just gonna to top mine off a little bit. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is frog our last stitch of yellow and change back to our dark color. And the next instruction is just to work two single crochet to move our starting point. So the reason that we're doing that is in the next row, we're going to be attaching our legs. The instructions for attaching those legs are just way simpler if we just work these two stitches as a separate thing unto itself and then start our new row from here. So I'm gonna grab two of my legs doesn't matter which two, they are all the same. And we're going to start by working 26 single crochet around to where we want to attach the first leg. So we are only attaching our front legs in this row. And the reason for that is if you look at the way your giraffe is working up, you'll see that we are forming his body on an angle, which means that we're going to be reaching where the front leg should be now, but we're not going to reach where we need the back legs to be for another couple of rows. So 26 should bring you around level with kind of the back of your neck. And over the next five stitches, we're going to be attaching our first leg. Now each leg has 10 available stitches around the top. So what we will be doing is attaching five of them in this round and then five of them in the next round. And that will help pull it up into the correct position as well. So making sure that the front of your foot is facing the same direction as the nose of your giraffe, you're going to position the leg upwards along the neck like so. And you'll see there, I've got my finishing off point sitting at the front as well. And I'm going to count five stitches down from that finishing off point. So one, two, three, four, and five. And that is the first stitch I'm going to be inserting my hook into. We're inserting from the inside of the leg to the outside of the leg. And then through the next stitch of the body as well. So working through both layers, I'm going to work five single crochet along. Like so. So your giraffe will have his hands up in the air sometimes singing hey yo, but we'll fix that in the next round. All right, we are then going back to working just into the body and we're gonna work three decreases across the chest. Like so, which leaves five stitches in your round. They should be three in your lighter color and two in your darker color. So those two stitches are where we moved our starting point at the start of the row. So you're going to grab your other leg, line it up the neck again, so that the toe is facing the same direction as the nose. And this time, because we're starting at the front of the leg and working towards the back, we'll start in the stitch that's right just before your finishing off point. Once again, work five single crochet through one layer of the leg and one layer of your giraffe. Woo! Uh, yeah, so those are the front legs partially attached. <laughs> so in the next row, we're going to take them from this goofy position to this goofy position. So still working in our dark color. We are going to start by working three single crochet. Make sure that you very carefully check your row counts during this part as well. When you're attaching pieces, sometimes it's easy to sneak an extra stitch in and that can just throw the whole lot out. And then we're going to work 20 half double crochet up and around the butt. And then three single crochet. Okay, so if you look at your leg, you'll see that you have five stitches remaining around the outside that haven't been worked into yet. And working just into the leg, so not into the body as well, we are going to work a decrease into the first two. 
and then two single crochets, so one in each of the next two stitches. Then in the last remaining stitch of the leg and the next stitch along on the body. So we had three decreases in between the two legs. This is into the first of those three decreases. We're going to work a decrease. We're then going to work one single crochet. And then we're going to decrease again. So again, one stitch of the chest and then the first available stitch on your leg, of which there should be five in total. And decrease. Again, just working into the stitches of the leg, not the stitches of the body. We're going to put two single crochet across and then a decrease into the last two remaining stitches of that leg, which brings us to the end of that round as well. Okay, so our legs should be more inclined to sit downwards and we're going to put in, a, in another row or so a little bit of extra stuffing in this bit here, which will help them hold this, this position. So uh, this is what our giraffe friend currently looks like. Okay, so in the next row, we're going to be attaching our tail. So it's all kind of coming together now. So I've grabbed my tail here. I'll have it on hand ready to go. And we're still working in our dark color for one more row and then we'll swap back to our pale. So this row starts with five single crochet. Then six half double crochet. And then it is time to attach our tail and we'll be doing that over the next four stitches. So if you look at your tail, you'll note that we have eight stitches available around the outside. I'm going to squish that flat so that the finishing off points at one of the edges. And then I'm just going to make sure that I can identify easily four pairs of stitches across the piece because to attach this tail, we'll be working through both rows of the tail as well as into the body. So working through all three layers, I'm going to line those four pairs of stitches up with the next four stitches on my body. And I'm going to start by putting my hook through two layers of giraffe tail and then into the next stitch of the body and just working a single crochet through all three layers and we're going to work four stitches across just like that so now our tail is attached and then we're going to work six half double crochet eight single crochet then we're going to work a single crochet three together and that should fall basically one onto each leg and one in the middle so one two and three if yours isn't centered and look the magic of editing makes it look like I'm perfect every time but mine was not centered the first time I tried this and I frogged my row and redid it so if yours isn't coming up centered go back finally three single crochet to finish the row changing to our yellow in the last stitch hello yellow it's been a while so we have just this one row to work in our yellow and then we will be attaching our back legs and you may notice that we are starting to curve off the back of our piece now too and changing back to our brown in the final stitch. Okay, grab your last two remaining legs. So working once again in our dark color, we are going to work five single crochet. Grab one of our legs, make sure the toe is facing the front and fold it up the body. And starting in the stitch just before your finishing off point, work five single crochet, work through one layer of your leg and into one layer of the body. So it's two layers in total and we're going to work five single crochet along. Now I think I scrambled all of that up but basically it's the exact same technique we used for the front leg. Okay we're looking straight at his butt right now. We're going to work four half double crochet across. Ta -da! Then grab our final remaining leg making sure the toe is pointing towards the front position it so it's pointing up the body count five stitches after your finishing off point so one two three four and five and once again work five single crochet through one layer of the leg and one layer of the body now we just need to finish off the round and we do that by working five single crochet and then in our last three stitches we're going to work a single crochet three together 
So your stitch count should be down to 25 single crochet at this point. All right, so we're gonna do one more row to lock our back legs into position. And then we're gonna come back and do a little bit of specialty stuffing to just really fold our, our giraffe into the correct yoga position. So we can actually swap back to our yellow in the last stitch of the previous round. And then just trim off our brown. Okay, so we work three single crochet, then a decrease. Let our five joining stitches trick you. We want to work around the outside of the leg and we're going to work three single crochet. Then we're going to work a single crochet three together. So the first two stitches of that will fall into your leg and then the last stitch of it will fall under the tail. You'll see that that leg is already trying to pull upwards into position. That's good. Then two single crochet under the tail. And then we're going to do another single crochet three together. So the first one will be the last remaining stitch under our tail. And then the next two will be the first two available stitches of our back leg. And again, it's going to straight away pull that leg out. Three single crochet in the last remaining three stitches of the leg. Then moving to the stitches of the body, work a decrease. And then four single crochet to finish your round. Okay, hooks down. <laughs> so right now we have a very splat giraffe and it's gonna be stuffing that helps us fix that issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab stuffing and once again, tear it into chunks the size of cotton balls. Sorry, I say once again. I think I last mentioned that in the lizard video. I don't know if I've said it this time. Always stuff with chunks the size of cotton balls. And then what we're going to do is tuck this stuffing, first of all, into the top of each of the front legs until they are completely stuffed. That's one. See, it immediately started standing up. Oh, it's pointing directly at the camera. You might just have to take my word for it. Let's do this other one. So see, it's off on a floppy angle. I'm going to take my piece of stuffing and I'm just going to stuff the top of that leg really firmly. And it wants to stand up a little bit straighter. Clap, 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 clap. I'm going to take another ball and just stuff it into the front of the chest. Now I'm using nature's poking implements. You can feel free to use a hook or a pencil for this. If my sausage fingers can do it, yours should be able to as well. So that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. Like it's pretty firmly stuffed from the neck down to the chest. We want pretty consistent stuffing. And then I'm just checking that the legs have no hollow points either. And they are pretty good. There's a little bit of a hollow here at the front that I'm just going to tuck a little bit more in there. There we go. So don't be alarmed if they're still sticking out at a little bit of an angle. That's to be expected. Gravity will take care of that. So next we are going to do basically the same thing for these back legs, even though we're dealing with a little bit more of an opening underneath. I'm going to take some stuffing and just finish stuffing the tops of those legs. Then I'm just going to use any remaining stuffing that I have to stuff the butt. Just making sure that I'm curving that stuffing up and around into all of those nooks and crannies. Now, the more you stuff this part of the butt and this part of the butt, the more your back legs will want to sit flat pointing downwards until you've got a chubby little fellow who looks a little bit like this. And now we're just going to work our final four rows to finish closing off this opening. It can be a little bit tricky to negotiate your stitches around your legs. Just do your best, bend them out of the way if you have to. Keep in mind that they will bend back up into position. Crochet is very forgiving, as long as you're not too rough with it. As you work up these final few rows, stop every so often to check to make sure that you don't need any more stuffing. And if you do, just tuck a little bit more inside. Sometimes I wonder if my goal with these no sew patterns isn't to just convince you all that sewing isn't perhaps so bad after all. <laughs> Like, sewing these legs on would have been a lot easier than trying to navigate around them in this row, I think. With that, we are going to finish off and weave our remaining strand around through the front loops of the six remaining stitches and pull tight to close. Just tuck that end away inside your work. And we did attach a number of pieces, so if you've got any sort of ends still sticking out, Take a moment to tuck those away inside as well. So you may need to grab your giraffe and just like squeeze to make the stuffing sit right. But do note that he will just stand up if you adjust his legs the way you want them to be while still allowing you to splat pose him if you so choose. Or what you can do is just take a needle and put like one little holding stitch behind each of the legs to just hold them in the vertical position if you like as well. Okay, so that is technically a finished giraffe, right? if you don't mind him being stripy instead of spotty. But I am just going to go one step further. So I'm going to grab my blue plastic darning needle and I'm going to thread it with yellow this time instead of brown. 
So as I mentioned before, there is literally endless ways you can add your shapes onto your giraffe. But just one quick and dirty way I found to do it is to just use our yellow to add vertical lines. So I'm going to work my way around the whole giraffe and I'm going to do this for every single one of the brown stripes. Giving them smaller tiles to break it up. Now while I do that, I want to just remind you that giraffes are not made out of brick. So your lines shouldn't necessarily alternate. If anything, that it should be more mosaic -y. So now that I'm done with that, I'm just going to thread my needle with a little bit more of that brown and do the same thing on the face that I did on the legs. That is just thread the brown through every second stitch to get this little spotty effect. And finally, I'm then going to grab my white and my yellow and I'm going to use them to add a little bit more detail to my eyes. And there is your finished giraffe. And you know, guys, I think I've named him Tortellini. For some reason, when I was making those spots, I just couldn't get that name out of my head. So there is our finished giraffe. I hope you had fun making him with me today. His name is Tortellini, as I said. So next week, we're going to be making what the patrons have voted into the second chance draw, and it might not be what you guys expect. But yeah, other than that, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.